Hello and welcome. I am Exit Light and this is my channel. Today I'm going to share with you a very disturbing story. It is about a woman whose name is, was, Katazarina Zawada. If you haven't heard this story before, and you think you might have a weak stomach, now might be the time to push that little X up in the corner. If you think you can handle what's coming next, settle in, buckle up, and let's talk about this bizarre crime. All right then, this is the case of Katarzyna Zawada, who in 1998 lived in Krakow, Poland. Due to Polish publishing laws, the rest of the names in this story will only be first and then last initial. Our story picks up on a very cold winter Polish morning on January 7th in 1999 when a tugboat operator named Mirosla M discovered that there was something stuck in the propeller of his barge pusher on the Vistula River. He went to go remove it. He was expecting something like a tire or a tree branch but what he found was something so disturbing, so horrible. He described the object as pale in color, saying it looked sack-like and it was nondescript. Then he noticed that it had a very foul smell. And when he looked closer, he also noticed a human ear. As it turned out, what Mr. M had found was the skin of 23-year-old religion knowledge student Katarzyna Zawada. Her skin had been neatly cut away at the thighs and the neck, reaching only as far as the left ear and not including the face or her arms. Her nipples were also absent. There was a seam going from underneath the right breast to the left shoulder. The coroner said that the body had been in the water for probably two to three weeks before she had been found. Katarzyna had been missing since November 12, 1998. She was described as someone who preferred to be alone. She had very few friends. She always sat alone during her lectures and her lunches, and she lived with her mother. She had suffered from depression in the past, and at one point, had tried to commit suicide. So, her mother became very worried on the day that she didn't show up to a doctor's appointment that they were supposed to go to together, and she notified the police. Naturally, it was discussed that this was a copycat murder based on the Silence of the Lambs, and the police were under pressure to do their best and to try and solve this case because the profilers had stated that there was a very high possibility that this was only the first in a series of murders. And the next murder did happen. On May 31st, around 1 p.m., the Krakow police received a phone call. An elderly man called and said that there was a murder at his house in a tiny village near the city and he believed that his grandson was the murderer. When the police arrived, 
they found in the home's basement a corpse hanging upside down from the ceiling. The victim was a 50-year-old man, and he had been beheaded, and the skin of his head and face were found at the scene. They had been sewn to form a mask. The head was found outside of the home. During his interrogation, Vladimir revealed even more shocking details about what he had done. He had worn his father's face and clothes for an entire day, pretending to be his father in front of his grandfather, who had very poor eyesight. The motive he gave was that he felt hatred towards his father after he cheated on his wife and left her with nothing back in Russia so that he could pursue a new life in Poland. It is possible that Vladimir knew Katarzyna. They both studied psychology at university, although they weren't in the same class. He started in 1992 and she started in 1993, but dropped out after a year. He did not confess to killing her. He is currently spending 25 years in a Russian jail. In Krakow, there have only been three cases ever of someone being skinned after death. The last one happened in 1983. A man named Jan N., who people described as a perfectly normal citizen, one day up and decided to murder and skin not only his wife but his teenage son. He then tried to dispose of their bodies by tossing them into the Vistula River piece by piece. He was arrested before he completed his plan and was then committed to a mental institution immediately. His poor physical health led them to him being granted parole during the same time revolving around Katarzyna's death. But the police say they determined that he couldn't have done it. Investigators found that Katarzyna had been skipping classes for two weeks before she disappeared, and in fact, she had disappeared during one of these truancies. The police believe that this could point to the possibility of her having a secret relationship. Her friends knew of only one male friend that she had. He was a fellow Grateful Dead fan, and she had met him at an event where people sold each other, used music CDs and cassettes. But this man had an alibi. In 2000, DNA belonging to another person was discovered on Katarzyna's skin. It was compared to all of the suspects and persons of interest in this case, including all known sex offenders, but it didn't match with anybody's. The case was reopened in 2012 after traces of a very rare plant species was found on her sweater, which the police believe could point to the location of the crime. Also, it was revealed that through the investigation they found that Katarzyna had been tortured before her death. Thank you for listening to this case. Thank you for coming to my channel. If you like content like this, if, I don't know if like is the right word to say, if you find it interesting, please subscribe. If you found this video to be interesting, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps my channel. And if you would like to be notified about upcoming content, 
as soon as I upload it. Go ahead and click that bell because people are not being notified of their creators if they do not click that bell. Thank you everyone.